What's up? Brandon Lilly here. I am on an early morning, 9.30ish, uh, burrito and coffee run, breakfast burrito that is, and um, just really good to be out and about again. Um, after the most recent setback that I had with the infection, I'm going to give you guys a, a pretty good overview of what happened, um, why I think it happened, what's going to happen in the next coming weeks, and uh, just give you guys as much information as I can. I haven't done a good job of really chronicling my comeback from these surgeries and what I do uh, through these surgeries, so I want to do a better job of that, and I feel like if it helps one person, if it makes you laugh, if it makes you mad, you know, if it makes you feel something, that's good, I guess. But um, I know there's a lot of people that are dealing with injury. I had no idea. I was so blind to it before I got injured myself. But um, a lot of people reach out to me for, you know, questions and things like that. So hopefully what I do over these next few weeks and months and really trying to keep good video evidence of that uh, will give you guys some perspective and give you some ideas as well. So number one, I was in the hospital for... Uh, six days. I went in on a, a Tuesday and was discharged on a Monday. Um, the reason that it took so long and the reason that things were so complicated with this surgery um, from, I guess, a paperwork perspective was that when they drew the culture out of my knee, I mean, it was like ridiculous how much stuff came out of there. The, the infection was immediate, you know, it was present. And this was in the matter of less than 12 hours of the onset of symptoms. For me, I never really have pain in the knee, just you know, symptoms of stiffness and tightness or whatnot. But when I start getting pain, that's my first alarm to say, hey, something's going on here. Then I stopped being able to straighten my leg, I stopped being able to bear weight. Um, then I started getting a little bit of that skin irritation, kind of like a fever feeling. All the signs were leading to something that was going on. Usually at this point, this is what I do. I'm a dumbass, and I say, you know what? I'm going to wait another day. I'm going to up my oral medications and see if that tackles it. Whatever it is, whatever has gone on with my body, I get sick really fast, and I know it. So I've learned that trend. It took me 14 surgeries to do so, 13 previous. Um, but I immediately got to the hospital, went to the ER. They drew this stuff out. They waited for the cultures to come back. Everything came back negative. Now keep in mind, I've been on an oral antibiotic for a long time, <clears throat> and I guess what their thought was is that the high amount of antibiotic that was in my bloodstream for some cultures were masking other cultures that might be present. But you know, nonetheless, an infection grew because it was present in the knee but we haven't yet nailed down exactly what it is. I've been continuing to do blood cultures and so on to get more of an idea. A week from now, or a week from my release, um, which will be next Tuesday, I'm really gonna have a sit down consultation with my doctors and uh, both the infectious disease doctor who monitors the infection, as well as my uh, orthopedic surgeon, and we're gonna have a game plan. We're gonna have a better understanding. Now. From a surgery perspective, from an actual physical perspective, this surgery was the most minor surgery I've ever had. Um, the incision is about half what it normally is. They uh, they isolated it. I guess they um, they used an MRI. I'm not sure on that, but I'm I'm assuming they used an MRI to focus on where the majority of the infection was. They did a washout surgery. Um, put me back together and I noticed very very quickly that I could do things that I haven't been able to do prior surgeries um, you know meaning I could lift my leg up and down I could lift the leg side to side it was painful but in previous surgeries when they've done a full zipper they've had to actually split the quad tendon in half and then open it up to get down in the middle of it they didn't have to do that um, they only had to cut a small portion of it this time they went through there were able to excavate everything out and get it cleaned so recovery time from a physical standpoint is going to be much much less um i'm already able to bear weight i'm able to um you know i can walk with my brace on without crutches you know a few steps but i'm not pushing that i've got the crutches um with me at all times i'm just going to try to lay off of it let it heal as best i can i feel like i got a 
kind of a stroke of luck by catching it early and getting in the surgery early. So I'm not going to try to set myself back by pushing anything. The only real downfall in all of this from a, from a physical or a training standpoint is this pick line. Um, I will probably continue to train uh, doing some cycling with my leg, my, my good leg. I'm using a Mark Pro and a, a Power Dot on my, my bad leg, using that two to three times a day. But as of right now, I'm on six plus hours a day of IV medications because they're using multiple kinds uh, just to do kind of a wide casting net until they get more information. So the pick line in and of itself can move, dislodge, become infected if it gets overly sweaty or if there's strain and this thing, to the best of my understanding, runs either somewhere near my heart or directly into my heart. I'm not completely certain about all of the, the technicalities on that, but I have been told that it could cause some arrhythmia and things like that if it dislodged. The last thing that I want to do is set back all the good progress that I've done and the good fortune that I had of catching this early by being overzealous in the gym. So for the next week for sure, um, until I talk to my doctors, my plan is to chill out, uh, eat a pretty loose diet. I'm not trying to stick to anything too stringent, but I am eating a ton of fruit right now and um, eating a lot of yogurt with things with uh, probiotics, good bacteria. And that brings me to my next point. I was talking to some doctors in Europe. I was speaking with Cal Dietz. I was talking to any and every professional that I could find that might have dealt with athletes with reoccurring infection injury. And the one thing that I kept hearing about and I proposed to my infectious disease doctor, um, and we're gonna consult about this, is you know, that I might be immunosuppressed. Even though the antibacteria is working and catching all the, the bacteria that it's, or the antibiotics, I'm sorry, is catching all the infection that it's supposed to be catching, um, because my immune system is taking a beating from three plus years of antibiotic use, and then just the wear and tear of the injury itself, um, that I might be susceptible to other types of infection that aren't being covered by these drugs. So there are some new studies out there using a low dose of certain medications that can really, really benefit the immune system. I'm going to be doing that, I'm, or hopefully be doing that. I'm definitely going to be exploring all types of um, natural pathways to improve my immune system been looking at a lot of different flora stuff for gut health um, you know but really I'm just trying to be a lot more patient and a lot more understanding in my complete situation and understand that I was getting very strong very quickly leg was doing very well my mobility was improving so I think the rush mechanism in my head to get back is kind of um, has turned off I think there's a sensibility about me coming back that I know that if I do the right things and I can stay healthy, um, I can come back probably to a very high level. And I certainly believe that I can come back better than I've ever been, maybe even at a lower body weight and so on, things like that. That will, that will definitely be my goal. But for right now, I think the best thing for me to do is just kind of chill out, wait till my meeting next week and uh, get a clear perspective on where I'm going, what I'm doing. But everyone is certainly uh, confident that with these changes and new understandings about what's going on, that I have a, a positive outlook. And all of my doctors, every single doctor that I've talked to, and as skeptical as they can be of real world athletes, every single surgeon, every single doctor that I've come in contact with has encouraged me to not only return to lifting, but return to competing. They think that the actual movements will keep me healthier, it'll keep lower the stress because I'm happy, I'm doing what I love, and as long as I'm smart and calculated about it, the leg tissue, the muscle tissue, the tendons, ligaments, um, all of those things should be in high functioning order as long as I let them heal. So, I'm in no rush. I think I can do a lot of things to improve my health, to improve uh, 
myself as a coach. I've been doing a lot of reading on different um, different ideas from recovery, mobility, training, on and on and on. So this has just given me another reset point to get better. And that's exactly what I intend to do. I really appreciate uh, those of you that have continued to stick through this and watch videos and support me and send messages and on and on and on. I'm actually kind of uh, thankful that uh, a lot of people have have stepped aside and stopped following. You know, I don't want fair weather fans. I don't want people who sit and stroke my eagle. I want people who understand, support, and believe in me. So um, thank you guys. Hopefully you like this. Comment below, share, whatever. But um, I'll get these videos up as often as I can. I'm hoping to commit myself to, you know, three or four times a week, maybe more. But I'm definitely going to be a lot more fun <laughs> in a lot of the video that I do than just driving around in my truck that's easy for me to do this but I got a lot of stuff coming for you guys um, just kind of opening myself up a little bit more about what I do uh, for myself as far as my training my lifestyle you know I, I like to keep a lot of things private but I think there's a lot of things that I can show that I haven't that can give you a different look at who I am and a deeper look into who I am so thank you guys and I will talk to you later